Okay, I made a video while I was on vacation, and I was doing uh, some comparisons with the exact same lens, the best lens that I got, the Zeiss 35mm f2 Distagon, a lens that is so awesome it will just make your tongue beat your brains out. Um, <laughs> one thing that nobody mentioned, uh, I've uh, said many times, the Greeks were famous for understanding this principle, that absence speaks as much as presence, so like I can determine something about somebody not as much by what they say, but by what they don't say. And uh, there was complete and total lack. There was, you know, a, a whisper in the desert. There's nothing said when I made this video and I posted these image samples comparing the exact same lens on a tripod between the Nikon D500 and the D750. Now, obviously, uh, while this is a 20.8 megapixel sensor camera, the Nikon D500 and the D500, of course, is just unbelievably good. Um, there is more translational information per square millimeter of sensor than there is in the Nikon D750. If the Nikon D500 were scaled up to a full frame sensor, keeping the exact same pixel pitch of 4.2 micrometers, it would be a 47 megapixel camera. So obviously that is not relational. The uh, pixel pitch in the Nikon D750 is 5.9 micrometers. Um, now ignoring the fact that obviously so, duh, duh, that uh, there is more information uh, for square millimeter of sensor on the Nikon D500 than there is on the D750. And ignoring that, the actual signal process, people think that, and this is true, but people, and I get comments like this all the time, people say, well, you know, bigger photo sites gather more light. And everything in every camera, whether it's a point and shit, excuse me, a point and shoot, that's what I call them, I call them point and shits. Everything in a, from a point and shoot to a professional DSLR is the exact same thing. And that equation is a retard simple. And that equation is... What is it? Time and gain equal exposure. Gain is of two types, aperture and the photo site. Time, of course, is shutter. All this equals exposure. But if you ignore the resolution difference because of the translational information difference between the D500 and D750, the color saturation between the two, even if it was the exact same pixel pitch, um, is far worse on the Nikon D750 than the D500. This isn't, these aren't the only shots that I took. I mean, I wasn't just taking a series of shots. Obviously, there's a difference in white balance, but we could ignore that. But ignoring uh, the, the resolving, power, uh, the resolving power difference between the two, people forget that... There is something at play here, and it's not simply, um, not that I can confirm or quantify the level of which AD Converter and SNR firmware, which of course certainly superior in the Nikon D500 than it is the D750. In addition to that, there is obviously so, and I can't qualify this, uh, I can't quantify this empirically so, there's obviously a better technology at play here, more than likely from what I've heard on the micro lenses and how the light is actually directed to the photo sites. Ignoring the white balance and ignoring uh, the resolving power difference, nobody even mentioned this, because the shots were taken at exactly the same shutter speed and aperture with the exact same lens on both cameras, both uh, were on the tripod, but the, the, the grain, uh, you know, the grain and the color saturation is far worse. Now, obviously, you can apply um, noise reduction software after the fact on the computer. People talk about, well, how is it out of the camera? Well, that's great and fine, but ultimately, I want to know how well it will clean up using really good noise reduction software on the computer. Obviously, since everybody's lazy, especially me, I want the camera to do the best noise reduction possible. You know, I, I wonder if sometimes if some people are buying like expensive cameras like this and just screwing themselves by shooting uh, JPEGs only, which is incredibly dumb. But if that's what they want to do, that's fine. But I sure as hell wouldn't pay, you know, two thousand dollars for a camera and be shooting JPEGs. Um, should be shooting uh, digital negatives anyway. Um, but the saturation is so much better on the D500 and the D750. Ignoring the resolving power. The saturation is better, the noise is better, it's not strictly 80 converter and SNR firmware. Um, what I've led to believe is that the uh, micro lenses that actually sit over top of the photo sites that actually direct the light to the photo site, even though the pixel pitch is 4.2 micrometers on the uh, Nikon uh, D500 uh, here versus 5.9 micrometers on the Nikon uh, D750. The signal processing, the AD converter, but additionally that the actual architecture of the design of the sensor, not the sensor specifically, 
but the actual micro lens array. And I don't know if you could actually Google search this too. It's not just lenses over top. They've actually experimented with all sorts of different micro lens arrays. A triangular, cylindrical, a real, uh, uh, really weird geometric micro lenses to uh, get the maximum efficiency and maximum trans. Also high index refractive, high index of refraction micro lenses that sit over top of the photo site. Which one of those is in play or multiple ones of those? That I don't know. But eliminating out the resolving power per square millimeter of the sensor, per square uh, you know, centimeter, doesn't matter which, of the sensor, the Nikon D500 performs a lot better. It does. And I am almost certain that that is definitely not entirely due to AD Converter and improved uh, SNR firmware for signal. People think, well, bigger photos, and I've made a ton of videos about this too, you know, bigger photo sites gather more light. Yeah, they do. But there's a lot more at play than just bigger photo sites. There is the design, the architecture of the sensor that especially is important. And they've experimented, I think there's, at last I count, there's like 50 different uh, types of micro lens experimentations. There's probably a lot more than that. Index of refraction, cylindrical, uh, pyramidal, triangular micro lenses, all sorts of freaky weirdness that they've designed to direct the light so that you have a given period of time and a given gain, i.e. the aperture, so that that third layer of, uh, that secondary layer of gain, uh, i.e. the sensor, the pixel pitch, the micro lenses, given a brief period of time that you have the maximum available gain for the signal and for the signal to be processed. So there is something at play here in the D500 that is additional to uh, the improved SNR firmware, SNR firmware and the AD uh, converters that uh, process the signal for in-camera buffering to the XQD cards or the SD cards or whichever card, doesn't matter which card it is. Just the, the saturation difference. You know, if the resolving power is the same uh, between the, uh, the D750 and the D500, the D500 is still superior. So if, you, if I ignore that one factor, the D500 is superior. Period. So even though the D750 has 5.9 micrometer pixel pitch and the D500 has 4.2 micrometer pixel pitch, and it is unquestionably true that larger photo sites... Well, the Nikon D3 has gigantic damn photo sites on it. Yes, it's a 12 megapixel camera, but we're talking about 2008. I'm not getting rid of my Nikon D3s. I got more than one Nikon D3. Nikon D3 has some huge... This is an example, of course. The Nikon D3 has huge honking photo sites on it. I mean, they're gigantic. But the signal processing on the SNR firmware, the actual out-of-camera that's buffered to the compact flash cards on the Nikon D3... You know, it isn't going to touch anything made in the past few years. D750, D7100. D7100 is 3.9 micrometers. I mean, it's a lot smaller than the Nikon D3, but the actual technology on the sensor, the actual technology on the micro lenses, the technology in the SNR firmware, the technology in the 80 converter, and the signal processing is far, far, far superior, even on the tiny, tiny ass little photo sites in the Nikon D7100, than it is on the gigantic photo sites of the Nikon D3. So while it is true, ultimately the premise of this video is uh, to correct a lot of the misnomers that people think, well, you know, just a big photo sites that gather more light given a period of time. That's true, but there's a lot more damn at play as far as the, Im the image that's captured with a given period of gain uh, and a given period of time than merely large photo sites. Micro lens technology, AD converter, SNR firmware, there's some other the processing and how it's actually processed. There's actually six steps after the sensor before it gets buffered and dumped under the card. So, you know, every Nikon DSLR, any any DSLR camera, I mean, you take these apart, I mean, they're, they're, they're just 10 pounds of poo in a 5-pound bag, and that's not just a sensor. I mean, it's not just an image captured at the sensor that's buffered to the card. There's a lot of uh, image processing and signal conversion that goes on, and that's where the, the magic is. People all the time talk about, well, there's a Sony sensor in that Nikon DSL. I don't give a damn. You know, I don't have to wear oven mitts to handle this Nikon when I'm shooting video or shooting anything else. And, you know, I don't care whose sensor is in it. You know, a camera is a whole lot more than a sensor. I can't, a sensor, as so far as the importance of what makes up a camera, you know, it doesn't even rank above 20%. It doesn't even rank near 20%. You know, everything else is... You know, so anytime someone says, well, you got a Sony sensor in the night wind, so, so what? You know, so what? This thing isn't crashing, this thing isn't overheating. You know, the interface, the ergonomic, you know. What makes up the importance of a camera is, you know, that's not even an engine. 
the engine of, an, of a DSLR camera isn't even the sensor. You know, so far as making a car analogy, it doesn't even rank to the level of importance of an engine. You know, if anything, it doesn't even barely rank to the, uh, the level of the transmission. There's so many things that make up a DSLR and the importance of how it works, the ergonomics, you know, uh, uh, how it processes the signal, the output. The, the sensor does not rank highly up there. You would think that it would. Well, a sensor is the heart of an Icon DSLR or any, you know, Canon, any. You would think it would be way, way up there. But ultimately, if you knew all the crap that's inside of a, uh, any DSLR camera, you would actually know better than to say stuff like that, but people say it all the time. But anyway, so that's the point. Even though the D750 has much bigger eyeballs, well, not much bigger, but certainly bigger eyeballs on it than the D500, there's a lot more to play he at play here um, as far as the uh, ultimate output. And of course, the D500 is superior flat out, especially in low light, than the D750 is. Even though the pixel pitch photo sites on it are smaller than on the Nikon D750. Okay. I know it's a long drawn out video, hate me if you want, whatever. You're, if you don't have people hating you, you're doing something wrong because anybody that tries to be all things to all people is uh, nothing to nobody. That's my motto anyway. Okay? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you later tonight on a live stream. Okay, bye.